Hey, good afternoon. I haven't posted on social media in a while for YouTube. I've been on my Twitter and Instagram promoting my business. I'm a travel agent. But a lot of people wanted me to respond to Colin Kaepernick, the black sheriff that's a Trump supporter, and all these new videos popping up about racism in other countries against blacks. And it's not pointless. I want to say it's pointless. And having a hard day in public education, wow, it's a doozy. For those of you who are curious, I teach middle school computer science and business courses. And at a public school in Texas that's going through a rough time. Now, I'm off, I'm heading home. The number one issue with Colin Kaepernick is he's doing the right thing. It's historically documented throughout the United States and the Western Hemisphere, North America, South America. Even Canada is affected by black racism. It's just not as prevalent in Canada. It's very quiet and subtle in Canada for my friends that are black in Canada would have told me. It's just not outright and violent as it is here in America. Um, Colin Kaepernick took a need to represent what's wrong with the criminal justice system in America. It's a system. The system was originated in Barbados where the first African slaves were mentally and physically broken by slave owners and in a Willie Lynch letter situation. There's plenty of books that can detail you what's going on with systematic racism historically in North America. The, my issue with Colin Kaepernick is that everyone that is ragging on him and telling him to be quiet. What's funny is Jerry Rice said that Colin Kaepernick was wrong, and then he got corrected by half of um, black entertainers, other athletes, black historians, educators even reached out to Jerry Rice and corrected him about why the National Anthem is racist, why police violence is wrong. Roland Martin and a whole bunch of other people have just been hitting the books hard for historical fact and correction to people that don't understand. And a former associate of mine, I wouldn't even call him friend, it was someone that I, I used to see when I worked at another school, found me on social media, sent me a friend's request, hey, how you doing? And after a couple of months of just seeing his posts about why Trump's right, it's not that I deleted him because of Trump. It's the fact that he accused me of, of being a black sellout. I'm like, what's your grounds and definitions for calling me a sellout? Well, you don't own a gun. You don't own an American car. You're overeducated. You don't sell drugs. So are you really black or are you a white boy in a black man's body? And I told him, first off, you're not even black for grounds to even accusing me of something like that. And after a long rant and tirade with him, I just said, you know what? I don't need this negativity in my life and just deleted him. As quick as he showed up, he was gone again. But the points he was trying to make is that he's enforcing systematic racism through his ignorance. And systematic racism means that all blacks are monkeys, all blacks are slaves, all blacks have a place, and that's to be controlled, dominated, and relegated to menial labor. They don't deserve an equal place or footing in society with whites and other ethnicities. And my number one issue with him is that he's not even white. He's mixed between Hispanic and Portuguese. He's European by genetic descent and ancestor, if you want to get into that typical, but he wasn't born in the United States. He just migrated with his family. His parents were active duty the American military. But by legal definition, he's a European. He should be in Europe. And and that's where a lot of people get tripped up. It's like African Americans. There's a lot of beautiful memes at I Love Being Black.com, the United States of Africa, another Facebook group, and pages throughout the internet and different websites that you can look up historical facts, documents, and it'll give you links. And there's a bunch of people that are actively journaling and social media warring for equal rights and, and all of those other situations. 
my issue with America right now, and not that I'm not proud to be an American, I just know what a racist country this really is. And I'm constantly reminded every time I bring up people in the media or places I've lived in my life. For example, I was blessed to live in Spain. My dad was active duty Air Force. And one day we were supposed to be going on a school class trip to go see Spanish castles. And my parents took the day off from work and we went by the cafeteria on base. The cafeteria was staffed by locals, which is customary for military bases. You have local people come work the, the jobs that you don't have Americans available to work, which number one was the cafeteria. So my mom, being Panamanian, taught me how to say what I wanted in Spanish, and I proceeded to say, un momento, por favor, yo quiero one order, papas fritas, french fries. I wanted to order french fries. My dad already had a hamburger for me in a car. The lady saw me. She made eye contact with me and passed me up for 10 minutes. My parents had turned off the car, scooped up my younger brother, and came in to figure out what was going on. When a lady sees my dad in uniform, she's like, how can I help you? And then my dad points to me. Why is he still here? Oh, we don't serve children. But then you look in the cafeteria, you have 15, 20 white kids without their parents, the same age, and they've ordered their food and been served. My mom, shooting from the hip, curses the lady out in Spanish. And the lady's freaking out because how can this black N-word speak such perfect Spanish is what she said. She ended up losing her job. My dad made a formal complaint with her supervisor and wouldn't let it go, even when he was ordered to. So when people tell me that I need to stand or sit for the pledge, I refer to the court case in the Supreme Court that says, under no obligation am I to rise for the pledge or respond to the national anthem. A lot of people don't understand that. For a country that has been built its wealth on bloodshed, enslavement, and racism, and systematic control of other cultures, you want us to kiss your butt and, and stand up to you, or stand with you. And the same person that responded to me on Facebook, that former associate, was like, well, black people didn't contribute anything to the history of this country, and I'm like, so, you're telling me the movie Red Tails was a work of fiction? No. You can look up in the military rosters that the 332nd Tuskegee attack group served in World War II. We can look up historical facts and figures from the military archives of black men serving World War I, World War II, all the way back to during the Civil War. Not only that, when the white officers couldn't catch, um, I can't remember, um, Pancho Villa and certain other Native American rebels, they sent the Buffalo soldiers to do it. And it just amazes me at the level of continuous ignorance to history, ignorance to facts, and ignorance to culture. So, I support Colin Kaepernick and what he stands for. I stand with, with the Sitting Rock people because it's funny how when the Europeans showed up, especially Christopher Columbus, I don't celebrate, I will never celebrate Christopher Columbus again. Growing up in a, in a whitewashed history class, oh, Christopher Columbus was great. He found America. No, he fell on America. And, and, his, and the truth about him reading history books and looking at different articles online and from every other possible perspective other than the European perspective, he's a committer of genocide. So fuck Columbus. I'm just going to be blunt and say it. Not only that, he massacred millions. He did nothing great. He got lucky. And when I think about the original story, he asked the men to give him three more days and they turn around and sail home. And he got lucky on day two and a half. He didn't do anything. He robbed his country of the people that were here and what wealth they had already established. He brought death, disease, and pestilence. And they helped him save his ship and his cargo, and he repaid them with murder. Let that sink in. Murder. 
killed the men, raped the women, sold the children into sex slavery. Yeah, I really want to celebrate his his day. No, we don't have a day for Hitler. And I agree with people when they say we need to stop talking about black history. And then I disagree with them. We need to celebrate the history of the world. History classes should encompass every culture, every ethnic group. And I had a good conversation with a buddy from the JET program. Even though we did JET other times, we're alumni members together. And we sat there and we were comparing notes. It's like every time I talk about Japan, Japan, it's xenophobic at times. Japan is not perfect. Japan has its own racial issues. Certain cities in Japan, they're uncomfortable with seeing dark-skinned foreigners. But they're not so discomforted to the fact that they're going to outright yell the N-word. They're not going to ask me to stand for the Japanese Pledge of Allegiance. They normally keep to themselves, so I have not had that level of racism encounters in Japan. When pe- when I hear the N-word in Asia, it's usually a white foreigner bringing it up. Guy Kokujin is the dark word for dark-skinned foreigner. It's not the equivalent of the N-word. No matter how many times you hear you just call me the dark one. Yeah, I'm dark, I'm black, I'm beautiful, get over it. But when they start using their derivations of the N-word, then it's then it's on like Donkey Kong for me. But the, getting back to Colin Kaepernick, to stand up for patriotism in this country is to openly welcome getting shot in the back. Growing up, my father had me reading a lot of history books about black military service. So a black man can go to France, fight against the Nazis, come back to America with medals on his uniform from the French Foreign Legion and and France and get hung, get murdered. And every time I've lived in a foreign country in my life, it's like, do I really want to go back to the United States? Knowing how much they hate me for being black, young, educated, and trying to do the right thing? No, I don't really want to come back. And that's why I always keep that hashtag, Japan seems real nice. Because in Japan, as long as you fit the bare minimum of the socioeconomic norms and the social expectations especially separating your trash and recycling, which we can't seem to do in America. They don't bother you. They want to welcome you, embrace you, get to know you, see what you bring to the table. The the funniest story about Japan is that at least the tax collectors love you because when you're a foreigner in Japan, they want to make sure that you're paying their local taxes and it's benefiting their economy. If no one else loves you in Japan, the tax collectors do. In America, the tax collectors could even hate you. The person that I no longer associated with said, hey, Trump's there for black people. I'm like... And my face just broke down and I just couldn't formulate the words. Or even coming out of my mouth to say, what the hell is wrong with you? Trump is everything that's wrong with the true face of America. Trump is the representation of all the evil that's wrong with America. He steals from people. He bullies them. He intimidates them. He disrespects women. Lied about his military record. And I was just done at that point. It's like, there's nothing good coming from him. Not even the hair grease he uses. He destroys the environment. The issue with... Clinton, we know she's corrupt. We know she does things under the table and people disappear when they complain. Whatever. But those two politicians have not addressed the constant harassment of African Americans by police legally, illegally, and unlawfully resulting in the death of my ethnic group (laughs) by police officers' hands. And I'm sorry to say this, it's the truth. People want to sit there and say, well, Colin shouldn't disrespect the flag. Uh, Hello, the flag was founded on our backs. When the Native Americans wouldn't build your country, the new country that was their land, wouldn't help the new world grow its place in the universe, 
transatlantic slave trade from 1619, even early in 1619, you went, European ancestors went to the continent of Africa, would borrow, beg, steal, kidnap, murder, and, and drag people from their culture, move them across the ocean, say, hey, you belong to me, I'm going to whip you till you get it right, and you're going to build this country for me, and we're never going to treat you equal. Yeah, I really want to support your flag. I really want to support the, the, the ethics and the morals and, and the chivalry that you instill yourselves upon. And it's even worse now being a, a teacher. I'm looking at the, the socioeconomic breakdown of America's education is that if you don't live in the right neighborhood, you can't go to the right school. Therefore, you cannot afford your own education when you really need it. You're hoping that there's enough tax money which is ridiculously being cut from federal and state spending across the United States to make us the dumbest country on the planet. And I say that because when I go to other countries and I make new friends and they speak four or five languages and they look at me and it's like, well, what languages can you attempt to speak? I said, I speak English as a native speaker. I'm still learning Japanese. And I'm still learning Spanish because I don't use them often enough to be fluent. And I didn't do well in my Spanish classes, even though I'm half Panamanian. I'm not a linguistics person. But at the same time, when I meet people who can shoot off in six or seven languages, I'm always impressed. I recognize greatness. I recognize that, that higher need for education. And it kills me that as big as America is, we have so much political red tape, state to state, city to city, county to county, that prevents us from being great. And Colin Kaepernick just really was the, the latest voice of reason and shout out from the masses that America still practice, practices some kind of foreign, vicious, legal genocide against ethnic groups when they speak up. America's been trying to eliminate the Native Americans since day one. They still are failing at it. But with black men, it's like, oh, you resisted arrest. What are you arresting me for? Nothing. Stop resisting arrest so I don't have to shoot you. That's the mind game in the Russian roulette that the American legal system is battling. And every time a black boy speaks up, the, the rug's pulled out from underneath them, and then every racist in America is coming out and trying to destroy that person. Like, for example, the Baltimore district attorney case against the police officers. The city has turned on her and is trying to bury her and her husband. And she was doing her job, trying to get a conviction against corrupt police officers. Yeah. I support Ka Kaepernick. And Roland Martin, I don't agree with all of his points, but the majority of what he's been saying in the defense of African Americans building this country... I agree with him. It's true. The thing is, is that being black in America versus being black in other countries, as an American in other countries, is that I feel more valued away from the United States than I do in my own country. I'm always under someone's thumb. Anytime I step out in the public, I'm looking for exits and making sure that in case something pops off or I'm getting harassed, there's a quick exit for me to make. Every morning I wake up and I'm consciously aware of the fact that I may not make it home depending on what traffic stop, what accident, what crazy person is going to encounter my day. In Japan, I, I had that, that nervous reaction twice out of two years compared to every day in America. And I can tell you that mentally, I was healthier and more relaxed and comfortable in my surroundings in Japan than I was in the United States. First off, not owning a car in Japan was awesome. Why? Less traffic stop issues. My traffic stop was a police officer asking me for my foreign identification card. Or the police car that followed me. Um, I... That's the one day I broke the rules on Japanese social norms. I was wearing a tank top and shorts and flip flops, and I was going to Don Quixote to give me a couple bags of chips to snack on when I had friends come over that night. 
South African refugees that migrated to Japan back in the day and never left, they wear stuff like that. So they confused me with the, the South Africans from Ghana and other places that speak French and thought I was illegally in the country. I get that. They don't know the difference. And I'll forgive them on that one. But getting stopped by a cop because, oh, are you racing? Can we search your car? I'm like, first and foremost, take that back. That's a slander on my character. I have it on record, and I would like to prosecute. Yeah, I had a cop, as I'm getting out of my car at a shopping mall, are you a street racer? No. Are you transporting anything illegally? No. Why are you fishing for information? Sir, I'm asking you a question. I'm like, yeah, and I need to call a district attorney. I know and report you. That conversation ended right there when he heard the words district attorney. There's too many corrupt cops in this country. And for one person to speak out on a national platform and then the world turns on them. Yeah, you must be black. You must be Colin Kaepernick. But here's the thing. You had the gentleman from the 1960 Olympics. You've had so many black actors, black celebrities, and even Hispanic and Native American celebrities call out the racism in this country, and yet we go silent. I was impressed when the United Nations said, hey, you really need to get on board with policing your own house before you point any fingers. And this was the 30th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square incident in China. That wasn't an ethnic cleansing. That was a political cleansing. That's not Chinese on Chinese racism. That was political bias. And they ran that kid over with a... They ran so many protests over with tanks. In Mississippi, you had the Little Rock Nine in Arkansas. First black children integrated. They're hitting their 70s and 80s. And the treatment that they received then, just for me to sit in the classroom across from a white student or a Hispanic student or a Native American student, that was cruel and inhumane. Being beaten and, and lynched just because you don't want me where I am. And the person I don't even associate with anymore is like, well, why don't you go back to Africa? I'm like, your people came and took us from Africa, you ignorant twat. They came and took us. We didn't ask. We didn't sign a contract. Don't try to tell me that the new history book says that slavery was an indentured service and the slaves enjoyed it. That's a damn lie. And it always gets me, my blood pumping, I'm angry, I'm upset. The deal is this. If we took away Africans and every black scientific contribution to the American society, we took away every Native American contribution, we took away every other group other than the white Europeans, this would be a barren sci-fi wasteland. Period. There would be no cell phones. There would be no video games. There would be no refrigerators. There would be no functional light bulbs. There would be a lot of things that just don't work the way they do without the people that help make them work. And that's the point. As humanity and its entire encompass, there is no one person or one ethnic group that did everything right. There is no one perfect master race, as Hitler so eloquently put it, before he punked out and committed suicide. And Jesse Owens stole all his gold. The point is, everyone needs everyone. That's how it is and, all, and how it always will be. You may not like me for the color of my skin. I don't care. Unless you comment on my Facebook post or you comment on this video, I don't even know you exist. And it really doesn't bother me. This is not necessarily for me. There's people that want to discuss it, but they want to remain, remain anonymous. Perfectly fine. Remain anonymous. Japan seems real nice because I can go almost six months at a time, not see a white person and not feel bad about it. When I have to worry about, oh, are they bringing back all the baggage of racism from the U.S. or wherever they're from with them to talk to me? No. 
more or less, it's on along the lines of, well, ohayou gozaimasu, kenki desu ka? Kyo wa nani o shimasu ka? Hmm, watashi wa shikoto desu, shikoto kimasu, shire And I can go through an entire day practicing my Japanese skills, enjoying the place where I'm at or not enjoying it. Japan's not perfect because I deal with racism. I dealt with racism at work. I got told that I should use British grammar as an American. I'm like, how redundant does that sound to say you have a master's degree from a prestigious Japanese university and you're going to make that blunt, blunt, blatantly racist remark and cultural remark saying that I should use British English to teach Japanese students when I'm an American AOT and how I learned English and I even brought my books with me were arguing over grammatical comments and errors. Yeah. And the fact that the same teacher had to notice at me, well, I know black people eat bananas and watermelons and you love chicken. I'm like, yeah, two out of three of those are wrong. I don't like bananas. I hate watermelon. I like my, I love my chicken, but have you ever heard of gumbo? Crawfish etouffee? Have you ever had a beignet from New Orleans? Have you ever had Ch American Chinese food? Have you ever had American barbecue? Have you had Korean barbecue? There's a whole world out here. You're too ignorant living in your bumfuck little town to get out and explore it. Yeah, it's crucial like that sometimes. And the wonderful thing about being an American and meeting other foreigners in Japan, there are two types. There are the really cool people from all over the world that realize that racism is a viewpoint and it's not worth bringing when there's not enough people to be racist against to a very small collective of people that are reaching out just trying to support one another as they're stuck in Japan or whatever country you end up at. You don't want to bring your old racial ways with you. You want to enjoy humanity, embrace where you're at, and live your life. Then there's the other type that live on their prejudices, that embrace their hatred, and they live in very small little tight communities. I never want to meet these people. is that I support everyone who believes that this world needs change. Not ethnic cleansing, not genocide, not systematic racism, not Negro knows his place mindsets. I don't need that. I don't want to even deal with that. Yeah, and it really bothers me when people like, you should know your place. You know what? My place is at my house. I don't need this job. I've, I've quit jobs before because, oh, he got up at him. What? Let's find an EEOC lawyer. I really never want to work a date again in my life. Yeah, it's that crucial. So, Black Lives Matter, Japan seems real nice. If you, wanna, if you ever have questions or comments, you want me to respond to racism or a historical argument, post in the comment section. Let me know what you're really thinking. I don't post too often for Japan seems real nice. Unless I, I, it really sits on my heart or someone asks me a question. So in response to that, all the articles and the videos that I've watched recently, I'll go ahead and link in the comment section below. That way we can continue a dialogue. Have a beautiful weekend. Stay blessed. Stay positive.